Praise the Lord. Yeah, do come back tonight. It's going to be very unique. We're going to show two videos. Um, I'm sure Bishop has already told you by now. We went to the Ark Experience or Ark Encounter a few weeks ago. And so uh, uh, the first video is Noah being interviewed. The second is a modern time interview, and it's both uh, uh, dramatized and it's it's entertaining yet it gets the point across there's a there's a strong message to it so come back tonight and in the second video you get to see a little bit of the ark and uh, some cool things in the ark so you want to be here for that amen Amen. praise the lord we want to thank you for all the calls the food the cards the text for Alyssa. Uh, this has sure been um, a crazy few weeks Uh, we went to the doctor monday and they said uh, come back this following week, so we have a, a, an appointment this Tuesday, and they said if all looks well, two more weeks, and they're going to cut her out of that cast. Amen. So uh, I thank the Lord for that. Thank the Lord for that. She has been an absolute doll in the midst of this. So good natured, um, doesn't complain about it, doesn't fuss at us, doesn't get upset. But she, the Lord's given her grace, and we know it's the Lord, and it's He's given Christina grace, and because she can't do anything, you know, she's she's laying there, can't even set up, um, so she can't do anything at all. But uh, the Lord is helping us through it, and uh, in times like this, fear can try to set in, you know, you know, you, you can't, you know, have you have two eyeballs, and if you have four kids, you can't be watching all four kids at every minute of the day. And fear can set in. and uh, But how many know love casts out all fear? Love casts out all fear. And uh, whenever we feel that fear coming in, we just pray and let the love of Jesus come in. And he calms everything. Amen. He calms our fear. And we thank you for your continued prayers for her. Uh, we certainly appreciate that. If you would turn with us quickly this morning to Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. Beginning at verse 5, Children's Church is dismissed this morning. Genesis chapter 37, beginning at verse 5. In a time of my life where we've experienced a setback, I wanted to look at someone in the Bible who experienced setbacks. So we're going to look at Genesis chapter 37, beginning at verse 5. And it says, And Joseph dreamed... A dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here, I pray you, this is the dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaf stood around about it, and made obedience to my sheaf. And his brethren said unto him, Shall thou reign over us, or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and eleven stars made obedience to me. And he told it to his father and his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves uh, to thee, to the earth. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the sayings. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, I will give thee, send unto them. And he said unto him, Here I am. And he said unto him, Go, I pray thee, and see whether it has been well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vow of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and beheld he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray, pray thee, where they're feeding their flock. And the man said, They have departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. 
And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to kill him. And they said to one another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for everything you've done up to this point. Lord, we thank you for the dreams that you give to your children. And Lord, help us to get through the hard times. Help us to get through, Lord, even the times where our dreams have seemed to be uh, experiencing setbacks. But Lord, if the dream came from you, it shall come to pass. We thank you, Lord, for that. Lord, let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church in Lincoln. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you remember what it was like to be young? Do you remember? Some of you can say, I'm still there. Some of you are saying, I'm still there by faith. Some of us here might have to go way back in the corridors of our mind to remember being young. Nevertheless, I'm sure you can remember those feelings. To feel like you had a bright future ahead of you. That you could overcome any obstacle, conquer any mountain, and defeat any enemy that stands between you and your dreams. You felt that you had purpose. And you were going to be somebody. You felt great. You felt empowered. Until you bore your dream in your soul to the wrong person. Have you ever shared your God-given dream to the wrong person? Have you ever shared what God had given you to somebody who couldn't connect with that vision? And they were kind and loving enough to explain to you why every aspect of your dream was wrong and, and why it would never come to pass. And, you know, if that's the case, you're in good company this morning. You're in good company. This is exactly how Joseph felt. He was excited about his dream. He wanted to tell everybody. He felt that God had given him this dream. But his dream made everybody angry. People that should have supported him. People that should have loved him. People that should have backed his dream. Turned against him. He couldn't find anybody to support his dream. Let alone be happy for him. I want you to catch a hold of this this morning. Listen, you cannot tell everybody your dream not everybody can be trusted with hearing the dream God has given to you come on somebody has anybody been there this morning you see your dream won't make sense to them they won't understand what good it will do they won't think it's necessary they, they can't see what you see and it's not enough for some people to tell you it won't work, to downplay it, or even to do their best to discourage you. But for some people, they have a need to do everything in their power to destroy it. You think your dream's going to rock my boat and affect my future and make me get out of my comfort zone. Well, you got another thing coming. I'll just destroy your dream. What a position Joseph was in. What a position. We see that there were two dreams. Genesis chapter 37, beginning at verse 8, it says, His brethren said unto him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Jump down to verse 10, dream number 2. And he told his father and his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him. But it says his father observed the sayings. You see, because of these dreams, Joseph's life would go from good to to bad and then from bad to worse all because of a dream 
Jumping down to verse 23, and it says, It came to pass that when Joseph was come to his brethren, that they stripped Joseph of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. You see, when the first thing that the enemy does when he comes to attack your dreams, he, he comes to strip you of your confidence in God. Amen. Confidence that the Lord said he would do what he told you he would do. The enemy will start to make you to question everything. Lord, was this supposed to happen? Can I even hear from you, God? I thought I did, but I really don't know now. Maybe this dream wasn't from you after all. Maybe this dream is just something I dreamed up on my own. Stripped of your confidence. Verse 24 says, And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty, for there was no water in it. Stripped of your confidence, you stand exposed, about to be shoved into a pit, stuck in a dry place where all you can do is go around in circles. Have you ever been there this morning? Have you ever felt like you were in a dry place going around the same thing over and over and over? While you're in the pit, your enemy seems to prosper. They're eating and drinking and being refreshed. God, why are they prospering while I'm down here in the pit? Verse 25, it says, And the brethren sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels, bearing spices and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. So your enemy is eating and drinking. You're in the pit. Then it goes from bad to worse. Forget the spiritual pit. Things are getting so bad. When I come to church, I feel like I'm in a foreign land. I feel like I have been carried off to a place I have never been before. I feel like I don't even belong in the house of the Lord. I feel isolated. I feel like I'm among strangers. And I have done nothing wrong. I have not sinned. I have walked before the Lord. I have kept his word. And it's just one thing after another. Verse 26 says, And Judah said to his brethren, What would it profit us if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. And let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother in our flesh. And he is our brethren. And his brethren were contented. And there passed by Midianites and merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they bought Joseph into Egypt. Let's be real this morning. Sometimes your brothers and sisters in Christ will sell you out. Being in ministry, I've seen it over and over and over. A pastor doesn't stay put for 40 years without being assaulted by believers. Without being attacked by people in the church. You see, in normal churches, the pastor rotates every two or three years. He's there. The people stay. He's there. Then when it gets tough and they start to bite on him, he's gone to the next church. But when you have someone with grit that stays 40 years, sometimes a fight will come. Sometimes you will be attacked by your brothers and sisters in Christ. You will be sold out by family members. People that never thought they would treat you like they're treating you. Sold out. Faster than you'll realize what's going on. Friends will sell you out. That's why Paul says in Hebrews chapter 2, in verse 2 and 3, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3 says, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against him, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. Paul saw it coming. Paul was treated the same way. He was attacked by his own brethren. 
But who are we following? Who are we following? Are we following Jesus? Are we considering Jesus and what Jesus went through? Or are we looking at man? Verse 3 says, consider him. Consider that he was betrayed by one of his own disciples. Consider that he was beaten and tortured by the ones he came to save. Consider that he was despised and rejected by his own people. Consider that he was killed by his very creation. We must always keep our eyes on the Lord. No matter what happens to us. No matter what people do to us. No matter what offense may come our way. All of this for Joseph because of a dream. And you know the story goes from bad to worse. Verse 36. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt. And to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's and a captain of the guard. Yet through all of this persecution, the Lord never left Joseph. Amen. The Lord never left Joseph. I'm sure he thought at times, I am all alone. He's in a foreign land. They don't even worship the same God. Did he even know the language? Genesis chapter 39 verse 2 says, And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. No matter what you go through, the Lord is there. No matter how many setbacks you experience, the Lord is there. That physical condition, you just can't seem to get corrected. The Lord is there. Those problem children that won't come to the Lord, the Lord is there. He's with you. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8 says, And the Lord, He is that 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 goes before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. Sometimes you just have to look at yourself and say, Fear not. Fear not. I'm sure by now, at this point in his life, Joseph had questioned his faith in Jehovah. It would only be human to wonder why. Why was this happening? Why am I going through this? This isn't fair. And he's asking God why. And as he's praying, he hears someone call his name. Joseph, come here, Joseph. And he must go because it's Potiphar's wife. And as if things aren't bad enough, this woman tries to seduce him. And as Joseph tries to escape, She rips off his coat, yells for the guards, blames him, and now he's arrested, taken to prison for something he didn't do. I'm sure he must have felt that God had forsaken him at this point, all because of a dream. Yet through it all, he still believed Though he felt alone, he still believed. Not only in Jehovah, but I believe he still believed in the dreams that the Lord had given him. Listen, no matter what you go through, hold on to your dreams. Hold on to your God-given dreams. Although you must walk the dark valleys in life, and we all must walk the dark valleys. Hold on to your dreams. Don't lose your faith. Keep holding on even when there's nothing left to hold on to. Turn to your neighbor and say, hold on. Hold on on this morning. Joseph sits in prison. Not just a few days. Not just a few months. But years. Years he sits in prison. There are two things that I want you to. To get down in your spirit and process this morning. Number one is God will use the very thing or the very action of a person that has tried to destroy your dream as a catalyst to bring your dream to pass. He will do that. 
the sons of Jacob thought they were destroying the dream of Joseph by selling him into slavery. But instead, it was their actions that was the necessary steps. It was necessary for Joseph to go to Egypt. It was the very steps that brought his dream to pass. Listen, if Joseph would have forfeited that process, if he would have forfeited that process, then his dream would have never come to pass. Listen, you may have thought it was over. You may have thought it was too late. You had taken one too many hits. I'm in no longer in a position for God to use me. I've had one too many setbacks. The enemy has hit me one too many times. I'm no longer in the location where the vision that God gave me can come to pass. Oh, no, listen. Everything you went through was for a reason. Everything that you're going through is bringing you through the process to the point of the manifestation of the dreams. Everything has happened in your life for a reason. What the devil thought would destroy you was actually was what bringing the fulfillment of God's uh, uh, dream to your life. It's bringing the, the purpose, the fulfillment of his purpose in you. When you understand this it's, and get this down in your spirit, it, you, you start to uh, you see scriptures like Luke chapter 6 verse 28. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully, despitefully use you. Just pray for them because they're just helping you get to your dream. They're just helping you through the process. If you truly believe this, this will change your way of thinking. Turn to the person next to you and say, they're just helping me fulfill my purpose. Some of you can say, I've had my helping to the degree of being fulfilled to my purpose. But listen, there's a reason. There's a reason for it. Jumping down to verse 41, part A verse, the verse that says, And it came to pass that the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed. Pharaoh dreamed. Jumping down to verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. He's still in prison. And he shaved himself and, came and changed his raiment and came unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of, of you that you can interpret dreams. Point number two, God will use someone else's dream to make your dream come to pass. God has given some, some of you dreams that are so big, you thought, how will I ever do this? How will I ever accomplish this? But don't worry, because somebody else is dreaming a dream that will line up with your dream. And it will work hand in hand with your dream. And the help that someone else's dream will give you will cause your dream to come to pass. Turn to the person next to you and say, stick close because I just might need you. In fact, prophetically, as a corporate body, there's a vision, there's a dream that God has given this house. And when we help each other fulfill each other's dreams, what we're doing is we're actually fulfilling the dream of the house. We're impacting the city, the region for Christ. You see, we need each other. This house is a place to fulfill your dreams. The person next to you should be somebody that will help you fulfill your dreams. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 says, For We are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, and ye are God's building. God has given each one of us a dream. He's given each one of us a vision and a future. We all have a divine destiny. We all have a task from the oldest to the youngest that God wants us to fulfill. We have purpose. And the Lord will always supply what we need to fulfill that purpose. He will always supply what we need. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 29 through 31 it says, And he gives power to the faint. How many have ever felt faint? Amen. These past couple of weeks sometimes I have felt faint. But listen, he gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. 
even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. The Hebrew word wait is kaval, which means binding together by twisting. So the Lord is saying that he that provides, that he'll provide what you need to accomplish your task if you get all twisted up and bound to him. If you get all tangled up in Jesus, he will provide what you need. Because if we're going to get to that level of supernatural power, where the supernatural becomes your natural, you need to get immersed in the presence of God and in the power of God. Suddenly you have power and ability to do things you never thought possible because his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Come on, somebody. And if we're all tangled and twisted up in Jesus, his thoughts will become our thoughts. His heart will become our heart. We're talking about a dream that God has given you. How many times have we failed to dream for God? How often does God want to develop something within us, but we fail to achieve it because we fail to dream it? God wants us to be dreamers. He wants us to dream big dreams for him. You may say, but I'm insignificant. I, I, I don't mean it. No, no, no. You need to dream big dreams for God. It's not too late. Maybe it's been a long time since that dream was placed in your heart. If you look deep inside, it's still there. It's still there. Maybe you found yourself in a pit because you dared to dream. You're in a dry place, stripped of your confidence, going around in circles. Because maybe you shared your dream with the wrong person. And the shock and the heartache and the pain of the situation that other people have afflicted on you has caused you to stop dreaming. But this morning, it's time to dream again. It's time to dream again. It's okay. It's okay. You may say, I have nothing left to dream. God will give you a dream. God will give you a dream. Stand with me this morning. You know, we call Joseph the dreamer. You know, just as we called Thomas, doubting Thomas, he doubted once. We call Joseph the dreamer. And scripture only says he had two dreams. Just two dreams. Did he have other dreams concerning the future? I don't know. Scripture doesn't tell us. Maybe not. Was he afraid to dream because of these two dreams? It's a possibility. It's a possibility. Don't be afraid to dream because you're in a pit. It's time to dream again. It's time to let it all go. It's time to realize it's a part of the process. Turn to the person next to you. Don't take it personal. The devil's just doing his job. He's just doing his job. Nothing worth anything ever came without a fight. The greater the fight, the greater, greater the struggle that you're facing, the more valuable your dream will be to you. The greater in power your dream will be. The heart of this message is searching for two groups of people. The people who need to dream again. And the people that need peace for the pit. If you hold on and continue to dream, your dreams will come to pass. If you hold on and continue to trust Jesus, your dreams will come to pass. 
despite what people tell you, despite what it looks like around you, God will orchestrate your life. He will orchestrate your destiny that those dreams will come to pass. God's promises always come to pass. He cannot lie. And God is truth. He is truth. So even if he said, and I've said this before, if he, if he wanted to say the sky is green, listen, the sky would instantly become green because it's truth. And whatever he says is truth. It would come to pass. It would come to pass. This morning, if you're falling into one of those two groups of people, I want you to take the hand of the person next to you. Maybe you just want to come and spend time with the Lord. But I want everybody to come and just pray and ask the Lord to help us to dream again. Maybe it's been a long time, but it's time to dream again. We thirst for you.